Hey guys, um, I wanted to just drop a quick video talking about this whole issue of retirement. Um, I actually wanted to name this video um, a Serious Lessons I Wish I'd Learned About Retirement, but that would be a horrible title. So, but here we go. So we have the famous 401k, then there is the IRA, which many of you may have already heard of both, and then I'm going to introduce you to something else, which I wish I knew about when I was in my working days. I'm on disability now, but I wish I had known about this back then in my working days, and I definitely would have taken advantage of it. But I'm telling you guys, while hopefully you're still younger, you're still working. So let's jump into it. 401k. What are the advantages of it? Well, one of the only reasons that I would see for getting the 401k, there are tax advantages. If you have a traditional one and you receive a high paycheck, then some of the tax advantages are you're not taxed on the money that you put into the 401k, but you are taxed later on when you retire and take it out. If you have a Roth, you're taxed on the money that goes into it, but you're not taxed on what come out, comes out of it. When people ask me about this, friends, family, I pretty much always tell them the same thing. I told my wife the same thing. If your company is matching what goes into that 401k, it's worth it. Otherwise, there's better opportunities out there. But let's say the company is giving you a 100% match. That means that for, let's say, I'm just going to pick a round number. Every $200 you put in there, they're putting $200 in there. That's a 100% return on your money. And for that, I would get into the 401k. Now let's talk about some of the disadvantages, some of the things I don't like about it. And the, fro the first is that most of them only give you mutual funds. Now, you know on my channel, we analyze stocks, and we talk about stocks. The only reason I would see you needing a mutual fund is, well, a couple of reasons. One is because you want a certain sector. You like the healthcare sector. So rather than buying a specific stock in the healthcare sector, you want a mutual fund that covers the entire healthcare sector. But most of the times when I see people buying mutual funds, it's for the plain and simple reason they don't know how to analyze stocks. They don't want to pick a losing stock, so they just pick a mutual fund. A mutual fund is a fund manager picking a bunch of stocks for you. And what I've learned is that most mutual funds don't outperform the S&P 500. When I was working, I had a company that was matching the 401k. So I got a 401k. And I just did one simple thing. I bought one thing in my 401k, that one thing was whichever fund 
mirrors the S&P 500. Why? One, because they don't really need, if they're just mirroring the S&P 500, they don't really need a fund manager picking all of these stocks to buy and sell. All they're doing is mirroring the S&P 500. So the fees on that is the lowest. Second reason is because even though most of the mutual funds are trying to outperform the S&P 500, most of them don't. So why waste your time? You can just call up the bank that manages your mutual fund and say, what mutual fund do you have that mirrors the S&P 500? Okay, give me that 100%. I'm not a financial um, advisor. I'm just your Uncle Dwayne giving his advice. Take it or leave it. The other thing with a 401k, you must have it at least five years. It has to be open at least five years. And you have to be 59 and a half to access your money. What if you don't want to wait until you're 59 and a half to access your money? What if you're 23 and you're really putting money into that thing and you want to access your money at 29? What if you're 25 and you've been loading it up and you want to buy a house? But if you're trying to take money out before 59 and a half, there will be consequences. Next thing is, there's a limit to the amount that you can contribute annually. You can't just put whatever you want in it. There's a limit on it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you could do your research. You can find the exact limits. They change every year. But there's a limit to what you can put annually. And lastly, mutual funds may not do as well as a fundamentally sound stock. You may buy a mutual fund and if that mutual fund brings you back 10 to 15% a year, you're clapping and screaming hallelujah. I bought stocks that bring me that in a month. And if you deal with options. Now, options are risky. But when you get the option and it goes right, you can make 50 to 100% in a month. So, whereas 10 or 15% in a year is a cause for celebration for some, for me, that's a reason to be disappointed. So now let's look at our next one. Our next one is the IRA, the Individual Retirement Account. And let's look at the advantages. One advantage with the IRA. Now the IRA is not your job that's going to open it for you. You have to be employed. You have to be a W-2 employee. But if you're a W-2 employee, you can contact a broker and open up an IRA. Now, what are some of the advantages of the IRA? Well, one, you can buy fundamentally sound stocks in your IRA. You're not just stuck with mutual funds. You can buy stocks. The same things I'm here suggesting in Uncle Dwayne's watch list, you can buy those in your IRA. The other thing, you can buy and sell, do all the different things that you would do with options in your IRA. I'm not sure about this, but I believe you can even deal with margin in your IRA. What? And I'm going to do a video on margin. 
because margin when used correctly can be a great opportunity. So what is what is um margin? Margin is actually where you can just borrow money to trade. You can't borrow it to go out and buy a car or anything like that, but you can borrow money in your brokerage account to trade. What does that mean? That means if you have $5,000 in your brokerage account and your brokerage account has margin in it, and you see a great stock, maybe I suggest the stock on Uncle Dwayne's watch list. You see this great stock. Well, now you have $5,000 in your brokerage account but they're giving you access to 5,000 more. So you can actually buy $10,000 worth of stocks in your brokerage account. Now you're gonna end up paying interest on that money you borrowed. But imagine in this, imagine you have around $5,000. You buy this stock. Maybe you make $500 profit in maybe a month, two months. But if you buy that same stock with margin, even though you only have $5,000, you're buying $10,000 worth of that stock. So now you have $1,000 profit. And maybe you have to pay around $60 for the interest on the margin, the money that you borrowed. I always buy my stocks on margin because when I buy a stock, I expect it to go up in value. And if it doesn't go up in value and it starts to go down, I don't hang around. After a couple of days, it's sold and I'm moving on to a better opportunity. So, would you rather be buying $5,000 worth of a winning stock or $10,000 worth of a winning stock? Um, the other thing with the IRA, you get to avoid taxes. With the traditional IRA, you don't pay taxes or you can deduct from the taxes on the money going into it. With the Roth, you don't pay taxes on the money coming out of it. I feel the Roth is better because when I'm putting money into a brokerage account, I'm expecting to make money and I'm expecting to make a lot of money. So I don't want to pay taxes on what comes out in the end. But that's just me. I also mentioned the access to margin. Now, what are the disadvantages to the IRA? And I can only come up with one. You must be at least 59 and a half to access it. What if you don't want to hang around until you're 59 and a half just to access your money? What if you get sick at 45? You know? There are all kinds of things can happen. So let's move on to our third option. And our third option is, and I mentioned this previously in a video that you may want to check on my channel, especially if you have a house. And that was how to get rid of your mortgage, meaning you don't have to pay a mortgage anymore. You want to check that out. And that is S Block, Secured Back Line of Credit. Now, with the S Block, there's no early penalty for withdrawal. What does that mean? That means that if you're 23 and you stock money into that thing until you're 28, and then you want to take a lot of your money out, you can do it. And I'm going to talk to you about how. The second thing is, 
there's tax advantages automatically to holding stocks for over a year. If you buy a fundamentally sound stock and you hold it for over a year, that's what's considered a long-term capital gain. Stocks that you sell for under a year are short-term capital gains. So let's say you make a crap load of money on a stock that you held for like three months and sold, but your normal tax rate is around 30%, you're going to end up paying around 30% on your gains from that stock. But if you held that stock for over a year, you're going to pay long-term capital gains. Capital gains meaning the money you made on it. And I believe your long-term capital gain rate is 15% at the max. So, on any stocks that you hold for over a year, you're paying like 15% at the max. But, with the S block, you don't have to worry about that. You can hold the stock for five years, six years, seven years, and still have access to your money. And I'll explain how in a little while. That was my next point. You can spend money without selling your stocks. The S block allows you to borrow. I'm hearing some that are saying 50%, but I've seen some that said 70%. You can, let's say you open an S block. You put $100,000 in there. I know of one that starts at $25,000. Let's say you open an S. Well, let's use the $25,000 one. You open an S block. You fund it. You fund it. You fund it. You have $25,000 in there. Now that you have the S block opened, you can actually go to that bank. No credit report required and borrow up to $17,500 from that bank within days. Within days. That's how the S block operates. The S block is designed in such a way where you can borrow against your stocks without having to sell your stocks. You still own the stocks. They're still growing in value, but you could borrow money against the account. And when you you want to check this with the blank with the bank, whichever one you're going to. But when you borrow the money, you don't have to pay it back monthly. With a regular loan, you have to make a payment every month. But with the S block, they're holding your collateral, which means the stocks. So you don't have to go down there and pay the loan off every month. Now, I would suggest that you pay off the interest every month so that the interest doesn't build up and build up. But you don't have to pay off the principal every month. So... You can actually wait. Your stock is growing in value, growing in value. Maybe two, three years, your fundamentally sound stock grows to the point where it's doubled what you bought it for. You could sell the stock at that point, pay off the loan with the winnings, and pretty much and pay off the taxes, of course, pretty much start off with the same period where you started off before you got the loan. So, like I said, there's no regular payments, very low interest for the repayment of loan, because you have collateral for what you're borrowing against. So their interest payments are very low, maybe around 5% or so 
interest is high now, so I'm not sure what they would be at this point, but they've been traditionally around 5% or so. The other thing is that when you have an S block, let's say I'm just going to give you something to think about. You open an S block. Let's say you open a small one, 25,000. Now you have $17,500 that you have access to, right? You could actually withdraw that money, put it in the bank, but you have to be disciplined about this. You can't be going out to buy a new TV or a car or whatever. You put that money in the bank and you withdraw it for your daily expenses, groceries, maybe lunch for work, maybe gas if you take a car, maybe rent, a mortgage, whatever the case is. So maybe your expenses is 5000 a month. That money will take you through three and a half months. But you're still getting a paycheck. What are you doing with your paycheck? You're putting your entire paycheck in the S block and buying more fundamentally sound stocks, which allows you to get bigger loans, which allows you to keep pumping money into the S block. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, if you do that, now, all of your money is working for you. All of your money that you've been working hard, you're now pumping into the S block. And that money is working hard and it's growing for you. But you're still able to live because you're tapping into the loan that you can get from the S block for your daily expenses. Like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just giving a few things to think about. Now, what's the disadvantages of an S block? The disadvantage is that the stocks can be sold and loan repaid if they fall in value. In other words, for every bank that gives S block, they have a certain amount. Maybe they say, if your stock falls 20%, we're going to sell it off and repay your loan. Okay, but we're not looking to hold on to stocks that are losers. So if my stock starts to fall, I'm going to sell it. You don't have to sell it for me. I'm going to sell it and I'm going to buy something else that starts moving up. But that's the only disadvantage I can think of with the S block. But the S block is a very powerful thing, and it's something that most rich people use. I'm talking about millionaires, billionaires. They own stocks and stuff like that. They don't sell their stocks until they're ready. They borrow against their stocks, and they live on that money. And we want to take a few lessons from them and do the same thing. Okay, guys, I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.